As I've said in the past, the 16-bit generation of shmups was my favorite. The shooters of this era featured the perfect blend of speed and complexity without feeling overwhelming. The genre really started hitting its stride and there are dozens of classic titles to choose from. On today's episode of 5 Games, we are going to take a look at 5 more great shmups released on the 4th generation home consoles. Truxton is a vertically scrolling shooter developed by Tau Plan and ported to the Sega Genesis in 1989. As an early Genesis title, the music isn't the best, the sound effects are crunchy, and the graphics are nothing to write home about. However, what the game lacks in technical prowess, it makes up for by being insanely charming. Sure, the music has the abrasive Genesis sound which isn't exactly appealing, but the compositions are excellent, and somehow the organ and piano notes manage to be easy on the ears. Same goes for the graphics. There is absolutely nothing here pushing the hardware, yet the large chunky sprites and occasionally bold colors are somehow awesome. As for the gameplay mechanics, they are very straightforward. You have three different weapons represented by three different colored power-ups. Collecting five upgrade tokens will level up your weapon up to three times. The third level of each weapon is pretty devastating, but you must do everything in your power to not get hit because dying will start you over from scratch with a weak weapon and the slowest speed. It's a bit hard to explain why Truxton is so fun. The game is greater than the sum of its parts. The excellent controls and insane amount of charm make this a great game. Arrow Fighters 2, known as Sonic Wings 2 in Japan, is another vertically scrolling shooter released for the Neo Geo CD in 1994. The game has a total of 8 selectable planes from across the globe, each complete with their own unique character and storyline. Each ship varies in speed, power, and spread. My personal favorite has always been Hyen. He has reasonable speed, but his power isn't the best. However, once leveled up, his secondary weapon homes in on enemies. On the flip side, Bobby the baby moves rather slowly, and his weapon is fairly narrow. But he makes quick work of the bosses. These little trade-offs make experimenting with all eight characters a ton of fun. Even better, the game's stages are presented somewhat randomly. You might play France as stage 2 and breeze right through it. On another playthrough, it might be stage 4, with significantly tougher enemy patterns. This is fairly unique in the shmup world, and I can't think of another series offhand which changes levels up like this. Above all else, the gameplay in Arrow Fighters 2 is superb. The controls are excellent, and there is a smoothness here I can't quite explain. There is a perfect mix of Twitch-style skill and memorization required putting Arrow Fighters 2 over the top. Finally, the soundtrack is terrific, and there are plenty of hidden destructible elements in the backgrounds, which should keep you entertained for hours. Musha was developed by the talented folks at Compile and released on the Genesis in 1990. I first played this game about four years ago, borrowing it from a friend for a few weeks. At the time, I thought the game was solid but a bit overrated. In the spring of 2014, I finally purchased my own copy at the Midwest Gaming Classic. I have to say, over the past year, the game has really grown on me. Each time I need to record stock footage of the Genesis, this is always a go-to title. For a 1990 release, the production values are simply off the charts. The soundtrack is outstanding, with a huge variety of instruments and long, complex compositions leagues ahead of most games of the era. Perhaps most impressive, the guitar samples don't have that annoying twangy sound, a true milestone for the Sega Genesis. Not only is the music outstanding, the graphics are fantastic. These aren't just breathtaking for 1990, these are breathtaking for this generation of consoles, period. My favorite part is when you are soaring over the clouds. 
You can see the enemy silhouette beneath the clouds, and then the lightning flashes. Everything on the screen is black and white, and the enemy then appears. It's stunning. Finally, Musha has a really awesome gameplay mechanic with the helper drones. Not only do these guys soak up enemy bullets, but you can change their behavior in real time. You can have them shoot forward, backwards, in the opposite direction of you, and even send them off, kamikaze style. Collecting specific power-ups will let you stockpile these drones as they are sure to get picked off, adding yet another layer to the deep gameplay. Musha has slowly been creeping up in price over the years, but in my opinion, it's worth every penny. Robo Aleste is the sequel to Musha, and by some accounts is the final game in the acclaimed Aleste series, debuting on the Sega CD in 1993. While it is visually similar to Musha, the gameplay has been significantly streamlined. Perhaps most disappointing is the helper drones. These are now stationary, and all of the strategy and management has been removed. Instead, the focus has moved to the secondary weapons. There are four different weapons total, each represented by a different colored power-up. Collecting the same colored power-up will level up the weapon. I've always been a fan of the yellow power-up, as it homes in on enemies and deflects bullets. The production values have been greatly improved. The soundtrack is excellent, with a great upbeat style playing homage to Musha, yet stands on its own. There are also cutscenes throughout the game if you like a little story in your shmup. Robo Alesta is a bit on the brutal side and emphasizes pattern memorization over bullet dodging. Still, it's a solid entry to the series and a pretty great game overall. Finally, we have Axelay. This was developed by Konami and released on the Super Nintendo in 1992. Similar to Life Force, but still rather unique, Axelay features both vertical levels in addition to horizontal. The vertical scrolling areas are what this game is most known for. Some interesting effects are displayed, distorting the screen, making it seem you are flying over a horizon. The horizontal areas are more traditional, lacking these effects. Konami did a great job showcasing the SNES hardware with plenty of transparent sprites as well as rotational effects. It's all utilized rather well and is a nice showcase for the hardware. Axelay also changes up traditional gameplay, and there are absolutely no power-ups to be found at all. Instead, you can select three weapons and switch between them on the fly. Getting hit will disable the currently selected weapon rather than taking a life. Between each stage, a new weapon will be unlocked, keeping things fresh as the stages progress. My personal favorite part of Axelay is the soundtrack. Konami had some very talented composers working for them in the 90s, and their games have always excelled in this area. Axelay is no exception, with some truly memorable pieces showing off the SNES hardware. For many, the solid gameplay and terrific presentation put Axelay in a league of its own. So, there you have it, five more great shmups released on the 16-bit home consoles.